It was a state legislative initiative when the Regional Transportation District in Denver got created. It came with a funding source, which was a regional sales tax. Now we had, it was originally five tenths, groceries were not included, then groceries were, take, were included, groceries were taken out, so it went to six tenths. But then we went out again in 2004 and raised it by four tenths. So we get a full penny, but the four tenths is to build out the rapid transit system. Again, people had seen it, felt it, touched it, kicked the tires, rode it, and wanted it. And it was an overwhelming success. The system is, is just, it's wonderful. When people look at it, they get very excited. Again, we're bringing it all together in this wonderful intermodal hub in the downtown. All of our major sporting venues, we're a big sporting city and so is Nashville, but we've got the Broncos, we've got the Nuggets, we've got the Avalanche, we've got the Rockies, all on the rail lines, by, purposely. For Denver, Denver Broncos games, we take 35% of attendees in by transit. A remarkable number. That's before the rapid transit system is built out. We estimate we'll be over 50, maybe 60 percent of all attendees will be coming by rapid transit when it's all built. You can park and get on a train and get in and get out. The other part is really important and Nashville is a great city, high entertainment area. Kids come to the downtown. They're going to go to bars, they're going to go to restaurants. You've got Vanderbilt. Nothing better than having those kids on the train. Kids are going to be kids. I One complaint we get that we need to run later so that we're, our last run is after the bars close, it's a very good idea. I'd much rather have the kids, you know, kids are gonna be kids, get them on the train, get home and be safe. That's another, you know, what, what, what is the savings of, of a life that, you know, a kid driving home shouldn't be driving home, get them on a train. It's one of those imperceptible benefits. It's, I have teenage kids, it's very, very important to me. You've got emerging suburbs. I'm looking at the MPO's density plans and your growth patterns. It's almost a mirror image of what I saw when I got to Denver. You know where the growth is going to happen. You know where the numbers are. You know where the concentrations are. The key is to get your rail lines put together so that they penetrate those areas. You've got good access by your bus feeder and disseminator services and also for park and ride so that people can walk up, bike up, drive up, or take a bus. It's absolutely situated. And again, the points about development, development follows rail investments. When the development community sees those rail lines and sees those stations, that's where they develop because they know that the economic viability of those investments will be guaranteed forevermore because you don't pick those up and move them. They're going to be there. Every city I've looked at from New York to Boston to Washington to Philadelphia, it's a no-brainer. It happens. We started with a big bus system um, and the key with buses is that <clears throat> It's got to be a, a good product. I mentioned a superior product. If you have lanes, HOV lanes, that buses could, could get into, and if, let's just give you an example. If your auto ride is 40 minutes, but you can do it in 20 minutes on the bus, that's a winner. If your auto ride is 40 and your bus ride is 40, it's a harder sell. It's pretty good, but it's a much harder sell. If your auto ride is 20 and the bus ride is 40, that's a very hard product to sell. Most cities don't have lanes that they can convert to high occupancy vehicle or bus rapid transit. If you have to go build them from scratch, expand the footprint, redo all your utilities, relocate electrical, drainage, fiber optics, whatever it is, rebuild bridge structures over highways to make them wider, it becomes almost as expensive or even more so than building tra uh, fixed guideway transit like light rail or commuter rail. So you've got to look at all those factors and then come up with the optimal investment for the particular corridor. There is that thought, although it's emerging right now in areas where they've made good investments, where they're, they're nice over-the-road coaches, reading lights, we have those. Uh, we, have, we have a whole mixed clientele. However, there is a thing we call the silver bullet impact, which is when you put rail in where there were buses, even if all the travel attributes are similar, travel time, fare, frequency, ridership goes up 30 to 50% when the rail replaces the bus. It's a perception thing. I don't need to know a schedule. I'm not going to end up in the wrong place. The train's only going to go to one place, and I don't really need a schedule. I'm going to go to the stop. If it runs every five or seven or ten minutes, I don't mind. If it pulls off, so what? I'm on the platform. I catch the next one. It's called the silver boat effect in the industry, and it just works that way. I was very impressed with the mayor's statement. Um, the initiative he's pulling together, creating a uh, metro mayor's group, a caucus, if you will, where all the mayors sit down, figure out what they have in common, come up with a common vision, and all commit to that vision. Wonderful first step. Again, if you want to be a great city, you need to be a great region. You have to think like a region. 
Sometimes there's competitiveness that emerges between cities. You're competing for the shopping center or the sales tax generator, whoever it may be. And, and that's probably healthy in a competitive market, but at some point, the regional plan has to predominate, and we have to say, let's do what's best for the region. So we don't want a Walmart at every train station. It yeah, generates revenue, but that's not good for us. So get together with some commonality in terms of the right kind of mixes of development, some office, some retail, some residential. You know, as the population ages, we have a whole over 50 real estate industry in Denver that just concentrates on that market because the baby boomers are selling the big house and they want to move and they want to move next to real because they're all figuring out that I'm not going to drive forever. So if I want to go to a game or if I wanted to go to the convention center or the theater for performing arts, I want to take the train. There's a whole nother market that's emerging and it doesn't have to all be downtown. It could be in suburban areas, but you've got to guarantee access. So I think the regional plan needs to come in. There's a role for everyone and it could really be a win-win if it's planned correctly. I'm so impressed with the region. The region um, at this point I think is, is poised to move into another era of uh, mobility investment, green investment, sustainability, and I just I feel the energy. Um, the mayors are obviously coming together on that and it would be a shame if it doesn't get followed through upon. You definitely need leaders, you need visionaries, you need champions that are going to move it ahead and it's not always popular to do so. But I definitely think you're heading in the right direction and uh, love to commit my support to do whatever we can do to make that happen.